Senator JV, what are your priorities at the start of this Congress? Well, uh, as you mentioned, no, uh, you were with me for four and a half years, and uh, it was a very, I would say that it was a very productive term. We were able to pass two landmark legislations, aside from the other significant measures. Of course, the one that you mentioned, the universal health care law, and the creation of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Although these uh, landmark legislations wa- was passed, it's in the implementation phase, in its infancy. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to go back to the Senate, that I would really want to oversee the implementation to make sure they go in the right direction as what we have envisioned it to be. And I think that uh, as the principal sponsor of these two landmark legislation, the wisdom of the sponsor is very, very much needed, especially in the early stages of the implementation. As I mentioned, I would like to see that it goes in the right direction. At least I'm back in the Senate. I think this, this will be my priorities to oversee these two landmark legislations. And as earlier, uh, you mentioned about my advocacy on the transportation, modernization, and infrastructure development. You know, the very first bill that I filed in this Congress, comprehensive master plan for infrastructure development and transport modernization. So that's the number one, because I have always believed that through infrastructure development, this will stimulate economic growth and spread out the development all over the country. So I'm hoping that I will be able to pass this measure so that whoever sits as president, no, we will already have a blueprint or a master plan that the government will be following in the next 50 to 100 years. Those are my priorities right now. So about that infrastructure development master plan, I was really interested uh, when I was reading about it, especially you stressing that the long term, because you know I think you would agree, Senator Juvi, there have been numerous plans already, but then it seems that there's no long term vision or teeth for for them to hold. To you, what are the main issues with infrastructure planning uh, and practice uh, at the moment? I sad to say, Carmino, the Philippines. I would say that we are now 30 years behind in terms of infrastructure development. That's a conservative estimate, probably more. Probably it's because of our political system, in terms of the press, the national officials, including the president, is only six years, and the local officials is three three terms for three years. So I think that most of the officials are concerned for the legacy that they will, would uh, leave behind. No? So, and when we talk about infrastructure development, uh, transport modernization, and big ticket items, this would mean 5, 10, probably 15 years or more of uh, development. No? So probably that is the reason why we were really left behind in terms of infrastructure development no? by our neighbors. No? Just in ASEAN, we used to be in the top three or top five in terms of economic growth, but now we have fallen behind Vietnam. So we are now number six, just in the ASEAN. I would say I would attribute out the foreign investments, no, shying away from us and going instead to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and now Vietnam. And we are just number six on the list because of our poor infrastructure and high cost of energy. So I have been advocating this since I was still in Congress. I've been pushing for the railway system, the modernized airports, so that we can at least be attracted to foreign investors. And it's great that you as a lawmaker and you know a senior official understands because you know you go on the road and you are a cyclist as well and an avid uh, motorbike rider. So you seeing the country with two wheels and on foot as well, how has it changed your perception of what would be important to prioritize in terms of infrastructure? I'm an avid cyclist. I bike almost four, five, even six times a week. (laughs) I have been a motorcycle rider and I am able to go to the far-flung areas, areas which are not often visited by yeah. national officials, no? uh, like Kalinga, Apayao, other areas in Cordillera, in Mindanao, other areas that are outside of the capital of the different provinces I'm able to go. And here in Metro Manila, while I bike around or I use my motorcycle, it's different car if you're using your bicycle or, or riding a motorcycle. You see everything. 
uh, on the ground, no? Because there's no aircon, there's no driver. You can observe almost anything that I, uh, as you go along, no? as, uh, as, I drive, as I ride along. So there's still a lot of things to be done, but I, I still think that the major thing that we really have to really prioritize is the railway system, the mass transit, so that it will not only solve the traffic problem, but I think it will decongest Metro Manila no? by uh, spreading out the development. Because when we have the railway system, all the provinces no, that will uh, have railway stations will now become growth areas, new growth development areas.